First of all, thank you very much for having me uh, in this distinguished forum. Uh, my name is uh, Chai Eitan Kwen Yanarojak, affiliated with the Moshe Dayan Center, Tel Aviv University, and uh, also with uh, Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security. Today, I would like to provide you a short uh, briefing uh, regarding the uh, latest status in the uh, Israeli-Turkish relations. Uh, as we know, in uh, 2022, um, last year, uh, Israeli President Yitzhak Herzog and uh, the Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, uh, they together launched a new normalization process uh, between the two countries. And uh, it gave us uh, very much hope because uh, unlike the previous uh, normalization process that uh, was collapsed uh, before, uh, this time both uh, leaders of the both nations uh, came next to the flags and they shook hands. Uh, we have witnessed uh, bilateral ministerial visits even um, in the sidelines side of the UN uh, UN General Assembly, uh, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the Turkish President uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan came together. That was a very historical summit because at the end of the day, uh, both of the leaders are holding uh, political responsibility in their own country. So it was even more important than the previous summit between Herzog and Erdogan because Herzog has no political responsibility. So uh, while we were witnessing a rapprochement uh, between the two countries and even Ankara and Jerusalem declared uh, their mutual interest uh, in cooperating uh, with uh, about uh, the energy uh, projects uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean, like uh, searching together, you know, uh, conducting seismic research, etc. Uh, however, uh, we uh, unfortunately uh, woke up uh, to a very uh, revolutionary uh, morning on uh, on October the 7th. Unfortunately, uh, Hamas's brutal, sophisticated terror attack against Israel, which claimed uh, more, uh, more than uh, 1,400 uh, Israelis, the lives of uh, the Israelis. Uh, our civilians were killed, butchered, raped. Uh, they were, uh, some of them, unfortunately, were kidnapped to Gaza Strip. And uh, therefore, Israel, as a sovereign nation, had no choice, but uh, had to declare a war against this ISIS-style terrorist entity, Hamas. And uh, indeed, uh, we found ourselves in a totally different environment also when we are speaking about uh, the Israeli-Turkish relations. The 6th of October was a bright day and the 7th of October was the darkest day. And, uh, and of course, uh, we should uh, underline uh, the fact that on the 7th of October, uh, the Turkish administration uh, remained silent uh, to what has uh, been done uh, by Hamas. The day after, uh, the Turkish president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, adopted a balanced, yes, I'm highlighting this word, balanced uh, uh, statement, and he called uh, both sides uh, to restrain and uh, not to do anything violent against each other, civilians, etc. Uh, even Israeli army did not begin to conduct uh, the uh, the. Uh, the massive airstrikes uh, then uh, in uh, in the Gaza Strip, but unfortunately we still uh, could not acquire a clear condemnation against Hamas's uh, terrorist attacks. And uh, after that, after Erdogan's statement, in a very weird manner, uh, the Turkish political parties, one after the other, including uh, the Republican People's Party, JHP, and including the Turkish uh, Workers' Party, uh, TIP, Turkey, uh, all of these parties, uh, one after the other, uh, declared their support uh, for the Palestinians. Uh, well, I mean, you can declare your support to Palestinians, uh, you know, in every occasion, but uh, we should we should underline uh, the fact that the 7th of October was not an ordinary attack. Uh, 7th of October included in its brutality, uh, 
the Palestinian Hamas terrorists, uh, they put on their uniforms cameras. And uh, thanks to their cameras, we could have these uh, brutal attacks uh, documentations. And um, we are seeing that uh, there were uh, uh, the atrocities that were conducted there were beyond uh, human imagination. Uh, babies were beheaded, uh, children together with their parents, they were set on fire. Little babies were put in oven and they were baked. So uh, we really wanted to see a humane response, at least a condemnation, a more balanced uh, statement also from the Turkish opposition parties. But they uh, tended and preferred uh, to act uh, in a uh, in a very pro Hamas way, uh, I must admit. Yes, and uh, after a week or two, uh, then Mr. Erdogan uh, began to see uh, the devastated uh, situation uh, of the Gaza Strip because of the massive uh, Israeli uh, airstrikes. And uh, he had no choice but uh, to deliver uh, a new statement uh, on Israel. And uh, therefore, uh, during his speech at the Turkish parliament, he uh, condemned Israel and, uh, and uh, also accused Israel for, con uh, for conducting uh, crimes against humanity. Moreover, uh, he also tagged Hamas as a freedom fighter organization instead of a terrorist organization. And uh, of course, that was the uh, last uh, straw that broke the camel's back. And as a result, uh, the uh, Israeli foreign minister, Eli Cohen, uh, got uh, this uh, necessary decision of calling back our ambassador, uh, Miss uh, Irit Lilian from Ankara. And uh, later, uh, a week and a half later, we have seen that the Turks also reciprocated to this act and their ambassador Shakir Torunmar uh, was, uh, he was called back uh, to Ankara. So today, unfortunately, we have no ambassadors uh, in Israel or in Turkey. And of course, this is creating a very important communication problems uh, for, the, uh, for the two countries. And uh, I also would like to make here an, uh, another important uh, contribution and analysis. I uh, already uh, mentioned that the Turkish opposition parties uh, emphasized their support uh, to Hamas while Erdogan remained more balanced. Uh, it should be uh, clear that while Erdogan was balanced, in, an, in a very ironic way, that balanced statement had turned Erdogan into the most pro-Israeli politician in the whole Turkish political spectrum. So he could not live with that, okay? But the problem is uh, the Turkish opposition parties are adopting the Palestinian cause uh, because of the fact that they have witnessed that uh, Erdogan profited from it. So when they are adopting that cause, uh, you know, it is, you, you, you have an impression that this is not this political party, this is not their own cause. So you feel that something is missing. And on 28th of uh, October, a day before the Turkey's Republic Day, uh, Turkish President Erdogan organized a mass rally for uh, the Palestinian cause. And uh, there, you see the original, uh, you see the original uh, Turkish pro-Palestinian rally. So, again, one more time, thanks to that particular rally that was organized by Erdogan, Erdogan neutralized the maneuver of the Turkish opposition parties uh, uh, with regard to uh, the Palestinian cause. So, during that particular uh, rally. Uh, Mr. Erdogan uh, portrayed Israel as an artificial state in the Middle East, uh, a, ch a chess pawn uh, of the West uh, that it is disposable. And he also um, uh, thought out loud, uh, he also said out loud that 
uh, there will be a day that uh, the West will no longer support Israel, and then Israel will uh, remain uh, together, will uh, will leave alone, will be left alone uh, together with the other countries in the region, and it will basically pave the way for its destruction. You know that was the uh, spirit of the uh, of the uh, of his speech. Uh, of course, uh, from Israeli perspective, that was very unacceptable. And besides that, he also mentioned that for the first time ever, he accused Israel for he accused Israel of supporting the PKK, the Kurdistan Workers Party. Uh, you know, uh, in the eyes of the United States, Israel, and European Union, the PKK is considered as a terrorist organization. So we have no question mark here. But even if the fact that Israel does define. Uh, the PKK is a as a terrorist entity. It did not stop uh, Erdogan to accuse Israel for sponsoring the PKK militarily and economically, and of course this will create a huge problem for the for the uh, future Israeli uh, Turkish relations, uh, because uh, of course I do not wish, but uh, in case of a terrorist attack against the Turkish civilians or Turkish uh, security forces uh, forces by the PKK terrorist organization, then uh, many Turks would blame Israel uh, because of Erdogan's statement, and I think that's uh, that was very unfortunate. Uh, and <clears throat> regarding the uh, international uh, dimension of it. I believe that uh, the Turkish attitude towards Israel also changed uh, dramatically. And uh, that was because uh, of the strategic surprise attack of Hamas against Israel. Uh, Israel, uh, unfortunately, uh, is not seen anymore as a strong state uh, by Ankara. And how do we understand that? We understand that uh, from the latest offer of the Turkish foreign ministry that uh, the Turkish government would like to act as a guarantor state uh, in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, of course, uh, Arabic is a Cypriot European uh, think tank. And I assume that you already know uh, what is a guarantee ship uh, when it comes with Turkey in 1960. Uh, when the Cyprus, when the Cypriot Republic was founded, uh, uh, Turkey, United Kingdom, and Greece, they became the guarantor states uh, of Republic of Cyprus. Later, due to the intercommunal violence in the island uh, in 1974, Turkey uh, uh, relied on this guarantee ship and uh, conducted a military operation, which is, a, in Turkish eyes, it was a military in, in, uh, intervention. And in Greek Cypriot eyes, it was an invasion, of course. And uh, the rest is history. We know what does it mean. So in case that the Turks will uh, acquire such a status also in Israeli Turk, in Israeli-Palestinian conflict, for the side, uh, you know, they are taking a side of the Palestinians. So... Uh, basically, we can tell that in the future, maybe in three years, five years, maybe in five months, uh, Turkey and Israel may uh, come to, to the confrontation uh, line, also politically, but more unfortunate from that, even militarily. And uh, I think it will not be a good uh, scenario, both for Israel and also for Turkey. So... Um, I really don't think that no Israeli government would accept such a status for Turkey, but the fact that the Turks are uh, telling this intention out loud, I uh, believe that this is very problematic for Jerusalem, uh, because at the end of the day, it is it doesn't sound very friendly, I, I must admit. And um, uh, in this regard, uh, today, uh, the Israeli government uh, disregard uh, these kind of uh, uh, so-called solutions uh, to the conflict. Today, uh, Jerusalem solely concentrates on eradicating this ISIS-like uh, terrorist organization. And uh, therefore, uh, uh, today, uh, since the Israeli focus 
is on the Gaza Strip and less on uh, regional politics, I do not see a, a more deterioration than the current situation unless the Turkish side will do another act. Today, uh, yes, we do not, unfortunately, we do not have ambassadors, but both of the countries, they did not declare a, a downgrade of the relations from ambassadorial level to the charged affairs, meaning that maybe in the very near future, we may see the exchange of the ambassadors once again, or um, maybe uh, the Turkish side is waiting for a possible resignation of Benjamin Netanyahu from the office of prime minister in Israel. It's not a secret that uh, Israeli prime minister suffers today uh, for uh, from a lack of public approval because of this uh, uh, because of this uh, huge uh, problematic situation that uh, took place in the Gaza Strip. And since he is the head of the whole state system, so uh, in a very natural manner, he is held responsible uh, from this malfunction in the system. And therefore, uh, the Turks uh, may wait uh, for uh, his replacement by another Israeli politician. Uh, according to the latest surveys in Israel, we are expecting to see ben Benny Gantz uh, to uh, replace uh, to replace Netanyahu in the future. Uh, Benny Gantz and Erdogan they already met uh, during the normalization period uh, face to face in Ankara, and therefore. Uh, I believe that there is a room for optimism, but we have here another question. Uh, I already mentioned that 7th of October is a milestone for Israel, and therefore uh, the Israeli decision-making uh, mechanism and the mindset is not different with the mindset that it was before. Meaning that I really don't know if Benny Gantz uh, possible potential new government or any other Israeli government, uh, which will be formed by another uh, political figure, will be able to digest uh, Mr. Erdogan's uh, latest statement uh, in Ankara that Hamas is not a terrorist organization. I really don't think that uh, it will be uh, possible for uh, for Israeli government, but. Let us uh, all believe that until the uh, uh, until the new reconciliation process will be launched, I really want to believe that uh, we will not be able to speak about a terrorist entity called Hamas. Let IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, do its work. Uh, if we will be able to defeat Hamas, so. Uh, then uh, automatically uh, they will not be also uh, constitute an obstacle between Israel and Turkey. And uh, therefore, as once Karl von Clausewitz said, uh, war is the continuation of politics by other means. So now um, the IDF will do the dirty job in order to open the way also for the future Israeli-Turkish relations. Thank you very much for having me.